hello again. Um, if you have heard my last talk, in my last talk, I talked about how you can construct complete leakage models. And in most of the existing tools, they are very far from complete their leakage model. So in this talk, I'm, talk, I'm going to talk about how you can reverse engineering an ARM, the microarchitecture features from an ARM M Cortex M3 core and make your leakage model a bit better, a bit more complete um, comparing to all the existing tools. So this is um, the speaker is still me, Sigo, and this is still my drone work with Elizabeth. But this time, I also got my previous colleague from Bristol, Dan, on board to guide us through all the microarchitecture mysteries. All right, so we already talked about um, leakage simulators from my last talk. If you miss it, then uh, leakage simulator are some early stage feedback tools, which can help the developer avoid using a real voice or scope or waiting for the response of certification centers. They can, uh, right after they finish their code writing, they can check whether their implementation is OK. And this will also tell you exactly what caused a problem and how you can fix it. So although this is a really um, enchanting, um, favorable Idea: The uh, most of the current simulator actually takes two different routes. One is taking the gray box routes, where um, you often see this on ARM processors. Uh, for example, the Elmo family, whether you are using El original Elmo, the extended El Elmo called Elmo Star, you are both targeting the Cortex M0. So um, both. Well, all the entire Elmo family were always relying on the instruction simulator code and simulator, which emulate uh, emulate the FAM instructions. So everything, all the knowledge are actually based on this. And your leakage model is trained from the profiling trace you got from the M0 core you have. And um, more specifically, your model will focus on the ALU leakage from the STM32 F0. And um, you know, f there are a few extensions exist. For example, there are extensions on leakage on the memory bus. There are extensions um, extend this to another version of uh, M0, for, for example, the M0 manifest by NXP. And there are also extensions that extend this to the Cortex M3. You can also take the white box route, um, for example, what what they did in maps uh, in 2018 is taking the um, academic version of RTL code. So in this case, you actually know what's happening in the microarchitecture. You know everything. Uh, but they also actually choose not to include everything in their model. They actually choose to only focus on the register um, bit flips in their model. They only capture the register hamming distance. Um, the good thing of all this is you don't need to guess about the microarchitecture. You know everything, and you don't really need any measurements here. But a bit recap from my last talk: when you are um, well verifying those models, both of them are really far from what's observed on the trace. So both of them are really far from ideal, and the reason for that is both the models are quite well relatively simple. If you think about Elmo, Elmo star, they actually focus on the ALU part. The ALU lies in, uh, in for a three-stage pipeline score like Cortex M0 or Cortex M3, the ALU actually lies in only one of them is the execute uh, stage. All the other stage, the two stage, are basically ignored. Uh, and also the model built um, is only for the ALU buses. Um, I mark them as Magenta lines here. Both of them are not actually in uh, architecture level. They both lie in the microarchitecture. That means you might not really know what's happening on those buses. For example, if we have this add instruction, add R0 to R1, um, you don't necessarily know which one will go to R. Is it R0 goes to bus A or R0 goes to bus B. So what's happening in Elmo represents the authors, or we say more specifically, David's guess. And in MAPS, the this, this situation is quite different. So MAPS have access to the white box uh, code, so the RTL code. So there's no guessing uh, involved. But the question would be like, um, is it really sa the same as the product on the market? So you don't necessarily know whether ARM um, provide us the same version, the academic version and the industrial version, are they exactly the same? 
or whether the manufacturer might make their own revision. Um, so there is some previous work working out in this direction and finding out their uh, leakage behavior is not entirely uh, is not, not entirely the same. So we don't really know exactly why, um, but there are some differences. And also stated in our original maps paper, they already said the leakage trace traced only the register. So they only care about the register bit lips. If you got some leakage not from the registers, for example, from the ALU, then that's not covered. Um, so if you listen to my last talk, sorry about this, this is not exactly the same as SW multiplication. This is another version. We actually work on several versions of SW multiplications here. Uh, but this one actually helps us to explain what's happening um, in all those existing tools and what, what are their shortcomings. So this is another version written in Pharma simply. It's still, um, and the realistic one will be tested on a, ARM Cortex M3 from the XP, and with Elmo, I have extended it to the uh, M3 model. So if you look at this, this is still 10 cycles, 10 instructions, but here we got two cycles being leaky. One is cycle 9 and cycle 15, this is the realistic device results. We don't really know why, um, but if you take a look at Elmo's result, Elmo missed both of the leaks. And for Elmo Star, not only you miss most of the leaks, you also provide and uh, produce the false positive here. For maps, you capture one of them, but the other one is missing. And you might be wondering why. So um, in general, that means your leakage model is overly simplified. It doesn't really capture everything, especially the microarchitecture features in your circuit in your realistic core. This is motivated for uh, reverse engineering the microarchitecture features. Um, by reverse engineering, I would like to mention this is a leakage-wise reverse engineering. That is, we only care about the um, microarchitecture features that affects the leakage and can be observed from the leakage. So if it's not re leakage relevant, uh, we don't care about it. And this is clearly not the same um, fine-grained analysis as binary code disassembly um, reverse engineering. And our final goal is building a microarchitecture enhanced leakage simulator. Okay, let's start our reverse engineering journey now. Um, so our starting point will, of course, be the public information from ARM. We know Cortex-M3 is a three stage pattern core. Um, the three stage usually code fetch, decode, and execute as this figure shows. And the only thing um, very interesting in this figure is in the decode stage, um, here it says not only doing the instruction decode, but also doing register read. This means the decode stage will not only do the instruction decoding, but also prefetch the necessary operand for the execute stage. This will also means um, because there are pipeline registers between um, pipelines, then you need some register temporarily storing the uh, prefetch operands. So at least there are two of them because most of the instructions have at least two um, operands. And also for the register register fail, because you need to simultaneously fetch at least two operands, you need at least two reading ports. And let's now take three stage pipeline one by one. So first of all, fetch stage, fetch stage, fetching instructions from your memory to your instruction register. Um, the entire stage is driven by PC, PC providing the, the instruction addresses. Um, but if you take a look at this picture, uh, most of the wires, the buses here, we know what's happening on them. We know the value on them and um, perhaps more importantly, most of them are not even data dependent. So um, we only care about data dependency. If it's not really data dependent, it's branch related issues. I personally believe there are better um, solutions for it. We don't really have to do this with leakage analysis. And for the decode stage, um, everything before the register fail, then um, they are still like uh, not data dependent. But uh, after the um, register fail, you, we got like several reading ports here and the obvious question is which operand for each instruction which operand goes to which reading port which will further affect what kind of leakage we might see 
for this questions we have to test it because there's no way we can get it from um, the assembly code so we test this customized code where um, it's quite simple the first XOR we send A and B to the microarchitecture and then in the next target instruction I said I send B, C and D and then I would like to observe whether I can see an interaction or you say bit flip between A and C or between B and C we find something between A and C then that probably means A and C share the same reading port or we find something B and C that means B and C share the same reading port so uh, in those four in below we have like four graphs each of them um, if you, you find something above the dash line here that means we have observed a significant uh, contribution of this interaction whether it's AC or BD AC is the uh, blue line BD is the red line here so for both two operand addition and multiplication we have seen both AC and BD that's quite normal and if you have only one um, operand addition so, so for example with one uh, intermediate numbers then you will only see AC there's no BD but if you have like three um, register instructions such like, uh, as list additions then we, what we find is all three of them will be loaded but only BD is a clear interaction so in this case we can't necessarily know which one goes to which we assume A and E share the same port and there's still something need to be fetched from another port so we assume there is a third port uh, this might not be correct this might be something caused by physical effects such as glitches but this is the best guess we can get um, there are also some instructions don't load anything for example this load instructions um, in our test it just don't have any interactions because it actually doesn't really load any uh, operand okay so the next step from decode to execute we know the after prefetching the operand we will send the operand to the pipeline registers so we assume there are two pipeline registers here RSA, RS1 and RS2 um, the next question would be uh, first of all which operand goes where so you can still uh, from here to, to here or from here to here so you can still um, go other way or and there is also as because we are attack uh, well we're targeting registers here um, the control signal can tell you tell the register saying please don't update your value please reject whatever comes to your door and remains your previous value so this is not possible with buses but this is possible with registers so we also like to know whether RS1 and RS2 will be updated or not so I'll skip all the technical details but directly telling you our results so this is our previous results with uh, which data goes to which reading port and this is our current results on which data enters which register so if it's um, if, if so so a signal like signs like this means it will not be updated the register will remain their previous value and the last um, part of our analysis is the memory subsystem which is kind of a headache um, this is actually well this part is often ignored by most existing tools um, but actually for a fair reason so if you think about it the memory system although it contributes a lot to the leakage it actually lies a bit far away from the core so this is a um, graph from arm so our um, everything we analyzed actually lies in within this uh, blue blocks so it's only a part of this blocks and this is the core and where is the memory the memory is not this memory protection unit the memory is usually connected through here something like this so the memory actually lies far away from the core and the mem to make it worse the memory is kind of self timed so it's not like the core telling you please fetch me this operand the, op the memory will respond in constant time so the memory can say sorry I'm busy please wait for me and that means the memory how the memory will respond uh, cannot be predicted by a simple instruction emulator you might also need a memory emulator to know what's actually happening there 
so this might be a problem for our completeness test because because um, our completeness this te test is actually synchronizing what's happening on your trace and what's actually executing in your microarchitecture. So if it's impossible to synchronize in the timing of it, if the memory can say wait for me one cycle here and wait me five cycles there, then it will be a obvious problem. So here we didn't do uh, what our euro thing we um, did well pretty much what the previous works has been doing, uh, relying on the existing knowledge. For example, the memory assess is always work-wise, like I said in my last talk, and um, specifications saying uh, perhaps there is one data bus which is shared between read and write, and there is a shared uh, address bus, and there is also an additional um, write buffer. So this is, of course, far from ideal. And now let's see whether we can, um, how should we build the leakage model, models. Uh, we already know how the data flows in the microarchitecture. So first of all, how, um, how should we generally build leakage models for circuit? So in circuit, we have several components. For example, we have buses and registers. Previously, we usually assume buses leaks its current value. So usually we assume it's having weight. And when they have bit flips, we assume it might also have time distance leakage, especially like registers, we always believe it has, um, when it flips, it causes time distance leakage. So here, um, what's happening here in the graph is if we previous value is a prime, and now we have a new value A, then we assume the leakage can be a prime flip to A. And we take some conservative approach that assuming um, A prime and A will leak jointly. So A will leak both of them. It can include any sort of interaction, including the Hamming distance, but not really restricted to, to the Hamming distance. So for any bus or uh, register, we always assume that the leakage is the previous value um, times the current value, so jointly leaking. But for combinatorial uh, logic, this is um, much more complicated because you have multiple inputs and this will also create all sorts of glitches, which is quite difficult to predict. Um, we also go through the conservative modeling. Uh, we assume the leakage will be um, both all of its previous inputs times the current inputs. All of them will be jointly leaking. And again, for fetch, we already said all oh, everything here are not really data, it's not really data dependent, so ignore it. But for the code after here, after the register fail, everything is data dependent, so we have to consider it. And we already know what's on D.5 to D.7, so for all of them are three buses, so we just say uh, each of them previous value times the current value jointly leaking. And for the execute stage, we know everything here is a big combined to, uh, combined to circuit, so no way to um, restrict it what the leakage might look like. So we just allow all the previous input times the current input. And the memory, there are three buses, address buses, read buses, and the other is the buffer, uh, so additional white buffer. So we assume they are jointly leaking on their own. So the uh, address bus, the read, uh, read write bus, and the uh, write buffer. And all together, we add all three of them together and we assume this is our overall model and verify the quality of that in our completeness test in my last talk. So we have six instructions here. We can see most of them, if something is above this dash line, that means you're missing something. And for most instructions, we got something okay. But for the specific addition uh, instructions, we are missing something. Um, I will skip all the technical details here directly and tell you this is what I would call a glitchy register assess. It means the glitches in your decoder will cause an incorrect register assess, which shouldn't really happen according to your functionality, but it happens and it causes some leakage. So if you add this in, you will have find this line below the threshold. All right, let's now go back to our uh, example in the beginning. Now we have reverse engineered all how the um, the micro architecture flows in your micro in your core and how the leakage behaves. So let's now go back to our beginning example to say uh, with C9, C15, why is it leaking and why 
Elmo or Maps fails in one of them or both of them. So for C9, our explanation for this will be the C9 is leaking the AOU outputs um, Hamming distance. So this is a bus Hamming distance. Uh, it's not really a register. Of course, Maps won't find this because Maps doesn't really care about buses. Um, for Elmo, because Elmo's model only takes the two operand bus, the input operand bus, and there's no ALU output operand bus, so this is also not in ELMO. Uh, for C15, this is register pipeline register timing distance. As we said before, MAPS takes care of all the pipeline registers, so of course you MAPS find this, but ELMO couldn't. Okay, so let's um, shortly, briefly summarize we, what we have achieved in this paper. Um, so we have successfully reverse engineered the microarchitecture of an M3 core. Again, this is a liquid-wise equivalent version. It's not really comparable to any um, binary code or netlist re uh, reverse engineered core. Um, we built a microarchitecture ar micro intense leakage model and show its impact on various masking implementations. Um, we only, I have only talked about one of them, but there are more in our paper. And currently, there are a few things we haven't, um, well, we haven't worked through. Um, a few things we have touched, but not really in a mature stage. So, for example, the cycle accurate memory emulator, we hope maybe the memory manufacturer can help us with this. And we can use the um, information, the reverse engineering, reverse engineered information to exploit more uh, subtle microarchitecture leaks. Uh, this is an ongoing work, and I have done some higher order testing, but um, not really in a mature stage. We, most of the experiments, or all of the experiments in this talk is basically first order. And uh, we are working on some flexible framework that works not only for the ARM architecture, but also for perhaps in the future RISC-5 RISC architecture. And um, last but not least, the leakage model we get here works not only for leakage detection, but also for formal verification, but we haven't really gone, gone very far in that direction. All right, that concludes my talk. If you have any um, questions, please ask me during the Eurocrypt live session. Thank you. Thank you for listening.